another episode of English Six here on DepEd Itulai TV. We are now in our second week to join us as we learn and explore the amazing world of English Six. This is Tutor Jess from San Lorenzo Ruiz Elementary School, SDO Pasig City. And together with me is your another awesome tutor, Tutor Ness. What a lovely day, everyone. It is another fun and exciting day as we uncover our topic for today. Again, this is your tutor Ned from San Lorenzo Ruiz Elementary School, SDO Pasig City. And together with Tutor Jazz, let us all venture out English 6 with much enthusiasm and excitement. So, what are we waiting for? Let us now begin. Yes, Tutor Ned. And today, we are going to study about determining the tone, mood, and purpose of the author. But before we start, what do we expect from our learners to their net? Learners, after going through this episode, you are expected to determine the tone, mood, and purpose of the author in a short story read. And let us now begin our What's In activity. For the direction, complete the following sentences. Write your answers on a separate answer sheet. Learners, for this activity, we are expecting different answers coming from all of you. Are you now ready? Let's do number one. My favorite book is... My favorite book is... Harry Potter. Yes, Tutor Jazz. Is Harry Potter really your favorite book, Tutor Ned? Yes, of course. That is a very good compilation of books. Wow, that's amazing. How about for number two? When I read a book, I feel, hmm. How about you, Tutor Ned? What do you feel when you read a book? Oh, I feel awesome and happy whenever I read a book. That is so nice. And here is our passable answer. I feel happy and excited. Isn't it true, Tutor Jazz? That is true. And for number three, Tutor Ness, I read a book because... How about you? Why do you read a book? Well, as an educator, we read book because we need to find something or we need to have some information from the particular book. That's right. And these are the possible answers. I read a book because it helps me build my vocabulary and imagination. And for number four, my favorite author or writer is? Of course, my favorite author is J.K. Rowling. And for number five, I usually read stories with? How about you, Tutor Ness? What's your answer here? Well, I usually read stories, of course, with my children. How about That's you, Tutor so Jazz? <laughs> I usually read stories with food beside me. Oh, <laughs> that's nice. Okay. okay, here is our possible answer. I usually read stories with soft music. Isn't wow. it nice? So great. And okay, for this What's a New activity, we are going to have the storytelling. And the title is? The title of our story is The Lion and the Mouse by Aesop. Okay, and let's now start. The Lion and the Mouse by Aesop. One day after a big meal, a great lion fell asleep at the door of his cave. As he was dreaming of all kinds of good things, 
he felt a tug at his mane and drowsily lifting off a paw. Caught a little mouse. Grrr, growled the lion. What are you doing in my mane? I'll eat you up. Oh, please, your majesty, squeaked the mouse. Please spare me. I had no idea you were a lion. I thought you were a haystack and I was looking for some nice hay for my nest. If you forgive me and let me go, I'll repay you someday. One good turn deserves another. Some days later, a party of hunters were looking for lions to put into the zoo. They saw this huge tracks, caught him, and threw a big net over him while they hurried off to bring back a cage. The lion roared in anger and jungle shook with his growls. The little mouse heard it and said, I know that voice. And off he puttered and full speed in the direction of the roars. He found the lion tugging the ropes of the net and making as much noise as a thunderstorm. Shh, said the mouse. Keep still and I'll take care of those ropes. The little mouse nod and away at the ropes and the lion was able to escape just as the hunters were returning with the cage. I told you, I would repay you someday, smiled the mouse in triumph. Even a mouse can help a lion. And that is the story about, what is the title again, Tuturnet? The Lion and the Mouse. That is so amazing. You know, the lion, a big mighty creature, thought that a tiny mouse couldn't be of any help to him. But like Tuturnet surprises us every day, the mouse, though small, did indeed come to help so the moral of the story is like what whoever it be whatever size we should help each other and these kind deeds always get rewarded being helpful to others is the most significant or important virtue and everyone is unique in their own way and learners, we hope that you have read with us and listened well so that you can answer these guided or guide questions here. Number one. What made the lion fall asleep after a big meal? Number two. Yes, he was full or satiated. Question number two. What kind of animal did the lion catch? Our answer? Of course, the lion caught a mouse. And for number three question. What did the lion desire to do with the mouse? What do you think is our answer? Here it is. The lion desires to eat the mouse. Oh, no. And for question number four. What persuaded the lion to believe the mouse promise? What do you think it is? Of course, he felt there was truth from the words of the mouse. All right. And for number five, 
What did the mouse do to repay the lion's kindness? What do you think it is? Of course, he freed the lion out of the net. And for number six, what is the tone of the story? Our answer, it can be cheerful, generous, or grateful. Question number seven. What mood is conveyed in the story? And our answer, it can be joyful or fanciful. And for the last question, question number eight. What do you think is the writer's purpose in writing the story? And our answer, the purpose is to entertain. That is right. Okay, and to turn that, since we are talking about the tone, mood, and purpose of the author, let us now proceed to our what is it? Let's have the first one. But before we proceed discussing tone, okay, you know, in a story or any literary piece, the author's point of view is reflected in the purpose of the selection. In determining the author's purpose, mood and tone are important factors to consider. So let us now define first what tone is. When we say tone, tone is the author's attitude towards the subject. It is also the feeling, the emotion, or attitude that the author wants the readers to experience. That is right. And also, we have here example to turn at, excerpt from the biography of Dr. Jose Rizal. As we all know, he's our national hero. Jose Rizal was born in Calamba, Laguna in June of 1861 and was named Jose Protasio Rizal Mercado E. Alonso Rialonda. His family lived on rented property that was owned by a religious order from Dominican, which made them a family of wealthy farmers. To the net, the tone of this piece of writing is somewhat truthful. Truthful. Yes. And the next one, or another example of tone, words. We have sad, ironic, humorous, formal, light, bitter, cheerful, truthful. What else, Dr. Ness? We also have playful, candid, generous, furious, scary, and pompous. That is correct. Okay, and those are for our tone. And let's now proceed to... The mood. To turn it, what do we mean by this word? When we say mood, mood is a story's atmosphere or the feeling the reader gets from the passage. It creates feelings that the author hopes the reader will experience. That is right. And also to turn it, when we say mood, this is, or the author's mood is often recognized as through the words that he or she uses to develop the setting, the time and place of the event. And let's take this for example. I have asked myself many times, is the Filipino word suffering or even dying for? Is it not a coward who would really readily yield to any colonizer? Be he foreign or homegrown? Is a Filipino more comfortable under an authoritarian leader because he doesn't want to be burdened with the freedom of choice? Is he unprepared or worse, ill-suited for presidential or parliamentary democracy? That is an excerpt from the speech 
the Filipino is worth dying for by Benigno Ninoy Aquino Jr. And the mood in this piece of writing is somewhat reflective. And we also have some examples of mood words. To turn that, we have happy, reflective, frustrating, idyllic, romantic, Brightening, joyful, whimsical, melancholic, gloomy, fanciful, and suspenseful. And let us now proceed to the last one. We have the purpose of the author. And when we say purpose of the author, that means? The purpose of the author is either to inform to persuade, to entertain, to instruct, or to criticize. Now, let's talk it one by one. Let's start with to criticize. We have different resources. Opinion, columns, editorials, and essay. That's right, Dr. Ness, and we have here an example of this. Editorial, unintended misinformation. A deleted post is probably the quickest way to deal with a social media faux pas. But if a post catches fire before deletion, it can be erased from public consciousness that easily. That's an excerpt from Philippine Daily Anchor A10, October 15, 2020. Now, let's move on to another purpose of the author, which is to instruct. We have different resources for this particular purpose of the author, which are recipes, manuals, experiment, and handbook. Tutor Jess? And Tutor Ness, we have an, an example here. Making the pancake batter. Making the pancake batter takes time. You sift the flour and baking powder in a bowl first, and then stir in the caster sugar. Next, you combine the buttermilk, eggs, and melted butter in a jug. Then, make a well in the center of the mixture of dry ingredients and pour the milk mixture. You need to whisk the dry and wet ingredients together until they become a smooth batter. And here is our source. Now let's go on to another purpose of the author. And that is to inform. Resources for this purpose of the author, which is to inform, are news articles and reference books. Tutor Jazz? And of course, we have an example here, Tutor Ned. Each kind of matter has its own set of properties that distinguishes it from other kinds of matter. These properties may either be physical, those can be observed or measured without changing the composition of matter or chemical. Those that can be observed after changing the composition of matter. And the source is Elementary Science Explorer 5. Now let's have another purpose of the author, which is to entertain. And we have different resources like short stories, fairy tales, and riddles. Chitter Jazz? Oh, I guess the example here is a riddle. Wherever I go, you always follow me. What am I? The answer is shadow. Nes 
Now, let's move on to the last purpose of the author, which is to persuade. And here are the different resources. Editorials, advertisements, propaganda, and speech. Chitter Jazz? And the example that we have here to turn at is this. Marzen Power soon to open. The first to five customers will avail of a 20% discount on all our services. Please visit us on December 15, 2020. See you! And that's all for determining the tone, mood, and purpose of the author. This time around, learners, let's proceed to our What's More activity. For the direction, identify the tone, mood, and purpose of the author in the given selection. Choose the letter of the correct answer and write it in a separate answer sheet. Are you now ready? Let's get started! For questions 1 and 2, this has something to do with purpose of the author. Question 1 or situation number 1. In our situation nowadays, it is very important to use disinfectants to clean our floors and walls and bacterial soap to wash our hands and body. Always practice proper health protocol. Is it A, to criticize, B, to entertain, or C, to persuade? Your time to answer starts now. And our answer is letter C to persuade and for our number two from jovi key's news article on philippine daily inquiry dated october 15 2020 according to health undersecretary maria rosario verhere the doh understood the fatigue everyone was going through these days because of the restrictions put in a place to control the spread of the virus What is the answer? And our answer is letter A, to inform. And for number two and four, this has something to do with mood. For number three, father just went home from work. He saw that his motorcycle was badly damaged. His face turned red and he shouted, Who used my motorcycle? A. Pity. B. Angry. Or C. Surprise. Time to answer starts now. And our answer is, of course, letter B. Angry. And for number four, it is already 10 o'clock in the evening, but her daughter is not yet home. The mother keeps on calling her, but the line is out of reach that makes her anxious. A. Joy. B. Fear. Or C. Excitement. Five seconds to answer starts now. And our answer is letter B, fear. And for number five, it has something to do with tone. While Anna was walking on the street, she saw a beggar asking for food. In her hands was a pack of bread intended for her daughter. But instead, she gave it to the beggar who needed it the most. A, benevolence. B, pessimism. C, Cheerfulness. Your five seconds to answer starts now. And our answer is letter A, benevolence. Did you get a perfect score, learners? That's very good. And to the net, 
let's see if they really listened well so let's proceed to our what i have learned point for the direction to the next complete each statement write your answer on a separate answer sheet let's start the purpose of the author in writing a story is either to inform to instruct blank blank and blank tone and mood are important in helping the reader determine the author's purpose in a selection what are these three blanks you are given five seconds to answer this And our correct answer is, let me read this for you. The purpose of the author in writing a story is either to inform, to instruct, to entertain, to persuade, and to criticize. Tone and mood are important in helping the reader determine the author's purpose in a selection. Tutor Jazz? And we also have here, Dr. Ness, blank is the attitude of the author towards the subject. Another is, blank is the story's atmosphere or the feeling the reader gets from the selection. What could be our answer here? Learners, your five seconds to answer starts now. Now, let's check our answer. Tone is the attitude of the author towards the subject. Mood is a story's atmosphere or the feeling the reader gets from the selection. That's amazing, Tutor Ness. And let's see here in our assessment part if they can still perfect or get a perfect score in this activity for the direction learners determine the tone mood and purpose of the author in each paragraph and passage let's start with here tone number one he has studied his plan and spent hours to finish it he is eager to beat the deadline a playful b determined or c romantic And our answer is, of course, letter B, determined. And for number two, the room is decorated with different colors of heart shapes and petals of roses are scattered on the floor. It is a perfect night to celebrate my parents' wedding anniversary. A, playful, B, determined, or C, romantic. And our answer is letter C, romantic. Number three. I wish I were a bird so that I could travel to many places. It would be easy for me to move from one place to another by widely spreading my wings. And our answer, letter A, playful. Right. And for number four, this has something to do with the mood. I woke up early to prepare myself for the first day of school. On my way to school, I was caught in a traffic jam for an hour. That was an unfortunate day for me. A. Frustrating. B. Mysterious. C. Suspenseful. What do you think is the answer? Letter A, frustrating. Right. And for the next one, number five. I had fun baking cake with my mother by following the instructions she told me. I couldn't believe that I baked a cake. Is it exciting, sorrowful, frightening? Learners, what do you think is our answer? Yes, 
letter A. Exciting. And for number six, I had a dream. I was walking in the middle of the night when I heard a voice screaming at the side of the road. I went to the place. I saw no one there and I felt someone was touching my hair. Is it romantic, whimsical, or suspenseful? What do you think is the answer, learners? Let's see. Letter C. Suspenseful. That's right. And for this part, okay, this has something to do with the purpose of the author. Number seven, Boracay has pristine beaches with white sand. It is one of the perfect destinations to visit here in the Philippines. Come and visit. Is it entertain, criticize, or persuade? What do you think is the answer, learners? Let us check. Of course, it is letter C, to persuade. Good job, learners. And for the last item to the net and learners, we have number eight. Philippines is rich in natural resources. It has wide agricultural lands, dense forests, and beautiful lakes and rivers. A, entertain. B, inform. Or C, persuade. And our answer is letter B, to inform. And that's it. Did you get a perfect score again, learners? That's amazing. And for our additional activity, here's the instruction. Read the story. Identify its tone, mood, and author's purpose by writing your answers on a separate answer sheet. There are two possible answers from the given choices. And here are your options or choices. Tone, playful, horror, sympathetic, delightful, mood, frustrating, joyful, reflective, mysterious. And purpose of the author, can it be to criticize, to entertain, to persuade, or to inform? Learners, you can screenshot this story. And thank you so much again, dear learners, for being with us all throughout today's episode. We hope that you have learned a lot and we will see you again on our next DepEd Italy TV English 6 episodes. And this has been Tutor Jess, your English 6 buddy. Thank you so much for really being with us. And let me end this episode, and I quote from Abraham Lincoln, the best way to predict the future is to create it. Learners, if you want to be good in everything, then you need to make it happen. Bye for now, and see you next episode, our dear English warriors. Bye for now!